Glory! Hallelujah! This is Evangelist Charles Kruger and welcome to tonight's broadcast. We're going to spend some time in the Word of God, reading 1st Timothy and praying in tongues, drinking some hot chocolate in the presence of the Lord and just uh, enjoying the Holy Spirit and that anointing that sets the captives free, that destroys the yokes. It is time in the presence of the Lord that changes your life. It's only there where your life can truly be satisfied and you live a fulfilled life. It's in the presence of the Lord. It's in times like these, just being in the presence of the Lord. Sorry about the typo yesterday. I said we'll be live on Thursday, 6 p.m. I meant to say Friday. So excuse me, but we're live again now and tomorrow again and, and Sunday again. And... Uh, so praise the Lord, we in the presence and, and everything is fine. Thank you for all the prayers. Bless you guys. You're supposed to pray for me in any case. <laughs> oh, bless you, Lord. Thank you for joining. Let me know where you guys are watching from. Hambraga Jekete. Jenny, bless you. Cattle Cross, bless you. Zika Taba. Mende Zite Levendo Robosa. Brest Levendo Robosa. Kata. I hope you guys prayed in tongues last night. Hallelujah. We're going to pray in tongues again tonight. I just felt in my heart that the Lord is saying, Timothy, 1 Timothy. So get your Bible together, get it ready, get your hot chocolate ready, and communion elements, the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus. We're going to take and partake of the communion of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to declare his death until he comes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So praise the Lord. Let's partake of some hot chocolate and communion in the presence of the Lord and get ready. I don't want to sit and read Bible for you. That's not an idea. Uh, the idea is get your Bible ready and read. Let's read in the Word. God said Timothy. I don't know. I haven't read Timothy in a while. But so we're going to read, I think, the first chapter. First one or first, first and second chapter maybe. We're going to just see what the Lord is speaking to us. Hallelujah. Bless you, God. Bless you, Claire, from London. Marie Bota, bless you from Kreersdorp. Teresa van Middelburg, bless you. Letitia, bless you. Leidenburg. Wow. Shaka Basa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless you, Claire. Sagre Vazekite. Let's pray thanks for oh, Port Elizabeth. Hello, Debbie. Bless you. Zide Mazoku Zakata Balendo. Antoinette, bless you. Also from Port Elizabeth, bless you. Randberg, Blauberg Strand, mooi man. Lisa, bless you. Jackie, bless you. Eva, bless you. Hallelujah. Bless you, bless you. Well, let's pray in tongues for about five minutes. And let's just get in the river of the Spirit of God. And uh, I'm so excited to be on again tonight. These broadcasts, I'm actually very selfish. These broadcasts mean more to me than anybody. I'm the first one that gets blessed about uh, with the presence and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So thank you guys for tuning in. And we're going to get into the first book of Timothy. Get your Bible ready and read with me. Otherwise, you're going to be lost. I'm going to pray in tongues for about five minutes and then we're going to get into the word and I believe that the word of the Lord is going to be so precious. Uh, the reason I'm doing this and the reading Bible with people is because people don't, the Lord said, don't just tell people to read Bible, read Bible and give an opportunity and make an opportunity available for people to sit and read Bible because otherwise your day just gets on and, and people don't read the word and you know, sometimes we can read the word in a, diff, in, a, in a wrong way, believe it or not. And so it's always good to remember that it is God's love letter to you. That it is so precious. That the word of God is alive and he is a person. And his name is Jesus. And we're going to be busy with Jesus now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so get your Bible ready. And we're going to read the word together going to have some time in the presence of the Lord. And so participate. And God said, just facilitate times of practice of the present presence of the Holy Spirit. 
Just facilitate it. Pray in tongues for an hour and invite people to pray with you. And now with the virtual technology that we have, it's such an awesome privilege just to pray with people from all over the world and uh, just invite people in into the presence. We just pray together. And uh, so that's basically facilitating the moving of the Spirit and facilitating the freedom that, the, that we can enjoy. This wonderful privilege that we have of taking time and fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. It's not a work. It's not hard work. I get so many prayer requests, you know, and, uh, and serious situations. And I mean, we all have need of miracles. There's not one person that does not need a miracle. Here tonight, everyone needs a miracle. Whether it's a miracle to be bl a bigger blessing to the body, or to start an off or something, to so that it's not just to be blessed so that you can enjoy it, but it's also so that you can be a blessing to others. Whether everybody needs a miracle, and I realize that with all the prayer requests and, and all all the things and all the needs and all the pressures and all the things that's pushing and pulling. And looking for your attention, you know, that the presence of the Lord solves most of these little things and the issues of life. When your heart is whole and your heart is complete and you have peace and, you in the, and you're one with the Lord and you have fellowship with the Lord, you know what? Out of the heart, it says, keep your heart with all diligence, because out of it proceeds the issues of life. And the only way we can keep our hearts is to take it to the Lord and, and get into the presence of the Lord. It was out of your heart. He says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. And there's, there's just basically nothing in this world that compares with what the Lord and His presence and His Shekinah glory is manifested goodness. What effect that has upon your heart. I'm not even talking about the wonder of enjoying Him. I'm just talking about the effect, the benefits of salvation. It changes your heart completely. And out of that overflow of a heart that is in love with Jesus, then things start working out in your life. I, I've very often, or sometimes I found myself in the same thing, and I, and I, many times I find that people tell me they're sitting in a hopeless situation, in a no way out situation where they just don't know what to do. And my answer is still the same. Get into the presence of the Lord. If you still wonder what you should be doing to change your life, to bring change and to align your life with the word and the promises of the word that is yes and amen. What, what should you do? Fellowship with Jesus. Get in the presence. That's number one. And if that's sorted and if that's taken care of, there comes the comfort of holiness. The comfort of the Holy Spirit comes and, bring, and makes you grounded and rooted. It brings you a stability, an anchoredness. And that's what you call faith and trust and hope. And when that hope and that faith and that trust is there and it's unwavering and unshakable because He holds you and He calms the storms, nothing that Satan or this world throws at you will be able to get you off course or get you off track or disallow you. It's the presence. It's the presence. It's the presence of the Lord. It's the fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Its life was meant to be lived in that place. And from that place, you can face anything and you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. And you can be fruitful and you can, everything that you put your hands to will be prosperous and successful. It's all flowing from the presence. But if you're not in the presence to start off with, and you don't fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and you're not in that presence, huh? You know, that's step number one. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say to you. Um, people go to psychologists because they want a, a different answer. They want a different uh, solution 
an alternative solution to praying because it can't be that simple we think in ourselves it can't be that simple just to go into the presence of the lord and fellowship with the lord and spend time with jesus and that brings healing and that brings miracles that brings breakthrough deliverance provisions it brings the word into manifested form into tangible physical feelable touchable reality it's in the presence of the lord but if we it's not the presence plus that and that and that no no it's the presence only it's god it's not by power it's not by might it's by my spirit say the lord and then everything all fruit of righteousness is a result of the presence of the lord that you carry and things start happening things work out in your life the things that you needed is being taken care of god provides god opens doors he connects you he hooks you up he connects people and he's a good networker he, he can network he can do that he can connect you with divine connections that you in your own strength could never ever ever have um connected with in your own capacity only god can do certain things these connections there's people that god wants to connect you with but only he can connect you you can't connect they'll never have the, if god doesn't set you up with these people with the right people then how how do you want to do it how do you want to do it if god doesn't set you up then you can try what you will you can network and uh, and go and have breakfast with all the influential people in your town and that's what past most pastors are now busy with networking and they network and they network and those relationships are so shallow and there's no real relationship there there's no real friendship there's no real uh, i having sharpening iron but if god hooks you up there's a real there's truth in there hallelujah and so so this is what the lord is speaking to me about and uh, he said timothy but let's pray in tongues for 5 minutes and it's the presence and while we are now in the presence and not many people tune in when there's prophetic words everybody wants a prophetic word but when it comes time for you to listen to the word of god then nobody wants to tune in you know what it is in these times we we honor the word that's the time of miracles because he said i will confirm my word with signs wonders and miracles hallelujah so get ready and he also said to me that this coming week and you can you can write this down it's going to be the start of the best time of the year so far it's going to be the best week you've experienced thus far in 2020 this coming week coming monday it's going to start you're going to be in another place it's a different it's a different different realm you you enter into the cloud you walk into the glory cloud come monday tuesday wednesday you're going to see it oh praise the lord so let's pray in tongues a little bit shen grubu zakata so join in don't just sit and get yourself somewhere where you can pray in tongues and where you can read the word get the bible and i've got the king james version here and the amplified but we're going to stick to the king james i like the king james <laughs> thank you jesus von der besikita la mande no mondo lo robo sekinda e ribando remene mesetilo glory 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 Hallelujah Jesus said it 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 Sare meridi to lo roshe kamanande o re bana marabateri te ravande glory 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 hallelujah Lord. ha shagezeke te bi rabako te bagaro boku singala mangode speak to us holy spirit and make the word alive tonight lord as we spend time in your precious presence We look away from distraction and we look unto you Lord. We leave our troubles and our cares and our burdens behind we cast it to the cross of Calvary as we know that Lord you care for us. Teach us and show us and open our eyes and open our ears anoint us Lord to see tonight. 
like never before. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, Lord. Amen. We are in 1 Timothy. So let's start reading. Song goes Zakata. I hope you guys prayed in tongues yesterday when I wasn't on. Zagadaba robo sekete baka. Hallelujah. Verse 1. 1 Timothy 1 verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior, and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope, unto Timothy. Now you've got to understand, Paul here defends his apostleship. Because there are 12 apostles, which is the foundation of the church. And Paul says that Jesus, and by the command of God and the Lord Jesus, is an apostle. Okay? They, you remember the disciples, they wanted to select somebody else that was in um, Judas's place, that was taken to be an apostle in Judas's place. But you never hear from that guy again. What was his name? You know, they cast lots and they wanted to replace Judas because he betrayed the Lord Jesus and he died. And all. You never hear from that guy again. Paul over and over and over says that Jesus himself appeared to him and that he's an apostle by the commandment of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So he, this, okay, but that's a, a sermon for another time. He's talking with authority. He's not just some guy talking. He's talking as an apostle. Unto Timothy, my own son in the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. My Lord. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace. A threefold accord isn't easily broken. Huh? Grace, mercy, and peace to you. Now when he's writing to Timothy, he says he's my own son in the faith. Now you've got a lot of people going around trying to make spiritual sons these days. God does not have grandchildren. God does not have grandchildren. Stop trying to make sons of yourself. For yourself. Make disciples of Jesus. We're not making disciples of us. Of us, we're making disciples of Jesus. But Paul said, you, you are my son in the faith. Why could he make such a claim? Because he's the one that got Timothy saved. He led him to the Lord. Then you are, that's how you make sons. If you want spiritual sons, go and get some people saved. Then you'll have sons. Stop walking around telling people to submit under your ministry and they in rebellion if they're not submitting unto you. You're not the middle man between them and God. Sorry. You want more sons to support you. That's not the way it works. Fathers support the sons. Fathers push up the sons and give them. Fathers want better things for their sons. But now we've got people trying to make spiritual sons. And you better submit unto me. And, you better, and they're manipulating you for your money. And they're making you dependent on them because if they don't be, pray for you and if they don't bless you, then nothing you do in your life is going to be a success. So you need them. And they want to take the place of the Savior. Sorry. God is my Father. Hallelujah. We're going to be good tonight. <laughs> Verse 3. As I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus when I went into Macedonia that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Ha, Rabba, Sheke, Tebalo, Robo, Kote. Ooh, Robo, Sebalamando, verse 4. Neither give heed to fables and the endless genealogies. Whoa! This is awesome. Yo, Jesus. You know what? This is, I didn't, I didn't remember what was in First Timothy, and this is this is what the Lord's been speaking about. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies, endless, hmm, which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith. So do. 
Whoa. So, so now you get to some of these guys and you walk out with more questions and you're not edified. It ministers questions. And so you have questions, questions, questions. It's good to, to ask questions. It's not, it's not that God's forbidding you to ask questions. But what is insinuating here is that you walk around after you listen to these doctrines of devils and fables, you walk around confused. So they're basically confusing people. And their doctrines, you can go and check it, it's in a loop. They've got a loophole. That's what they find. They take the word out of context and they look for loopholes so that you can't, because they, they, they want to bring confusion and they're just going around in circles. But the word says that on the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established. So every word be established. So So look for the context of scripture. And the message of the word. Hallelujah. Verse 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart. Now that's the tester. If there's no charity out of a pure heart. Not taint, stained um, intentions or perverted motives. Pure motives. Why do you want to be blessed? Why do you want the presence of the Lord? Why do you seek the face of God? What's your motive? We have to ask these questions. We've got to ask that the Holy Spirit bring us to a pure heart so that we don't seek the face of the Lord in vain. And we don't seek the face of the Lord just to get something you know, or or we want to prostitute ourselves and now do something for him and give him intimacy so that we somehow get a reward for our service. Absolute harlotry and God says he will not join himself with a harlot. Carebe so so Lord give us pure hearts and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Praise you, Jesus. Verse 6. From which some having swerved have turned aside unto vain jangling. Verse 6 in the Amplified says, Certain individuals have missed the mark on this very matter, have wandered away in vain, into vain arguments and discussions and purposeless talks. Does this sound familiar? I think you can hardly put on any Christian television station and look for a while and you'll see people coming with funny stuff. They just want to argue and discuss and have, they have purposeless talk. Wow. My God. Shaga Brigande. Desiring to be teachers of the law. Understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. Yeah, so they want to come and teach the law. Christ is the fulfillment of the work. But anyway, let's go on, verse 8. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient. If you're disobedient, you don't have. Christ in your life. The law is absolutely still in effect over your life. It is for the ungodly and the disobedient. But when you are set free, hallelujah, listen to this. He says, the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, oh God, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, 
according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. Yeah. May I thank Christ Jesus. This is verse 12. 1 Timothy 1 verse 12. Get your Bible and read with me. And I think, because we're just going to read Bible basically. This is what it's all about tonight. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, an injurious but I obtained mercy because he did it. I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all expectation, acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Of who I am chief. Thank you, Lord. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's awesome. So he says, the fact that Jesus called me shows you how long suffering he is, how, how he is glorified. For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. To life everlasting. <laughs> I've never thought about this. Paul, what Paul says here. He says, Paul, he says, Jesus saved me so that the world may know how long suffering he is and how faithful he is, and to set a pattern for them. I mean, what a thing to say. And he says, This saying is worthy of acceptation, and it's a faithful saying. That Christ is a great savior and I'm the greatest, I'm the chiefest of sinners. And Christ saved me and put me into the ministry to show people how faithful he is. How long suffering he is as a witness. Crazy. I can almost, I can say that same thing. I'm telling you, if God saved me, then he can save anyone. I cannot judge anybody. I don't qualify, I don't, I can't judge people because I did worse things than most in my life. So I, I, I can't, um, I, there's very few people that can shock me with things. Uh, I can always tell them God's grace is greater most, most of the time. Okay, I didn't do, I don't want to talk about all the things, but within reason okay <laughs> within the law so listen I can't even live out of all as means for my other testimonies Jenny want that is not a scope that I am called to be a soul winner and it's not the righteous and the healed that is in need of a physician you know when you go out into the streets and the front lines and you go and do soul winning you get your hands dirty it's, those people don't want to get saved. And you don't see pastors going there where the sinners are. But evangelists have to go there. Because that's where they are. You go where they are. And that's where you, you get your hands dirty. And it feels like dust clinging onto you. But I can't judge. I can't walk in there and go and judge them. I'll miss them all. I'll, I'll waste my time. I won't be able to win souls. You've got to go in there with mercy. And grace and the solution and the answer. You know. So 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 you can't go in there in judgment. We've not received the ministry of judgment. The only ministry that we've received from the Lord Jesus is a ministry of reconciliation. He said, You have received this ministry of reconciliation. What does that mean? We reconcile people to Jesus. We reconcile them to the Father. Hallelujah. The thing that separates them, the guilt, the shame, the condemnation, we go and we preach the gospel. 
and we teach the gospel and our lives must be, you got to remember how faithful God was when he saved you. You got to, you got to know how merciful he is towards you before you can go to tell people how merciful he will be towards them. You got to have a revelation of God's faithfulness towards you. You got to know it. You've got to know it like you know yourself. You got to you you got to live it. You got to understand. Oh man. You you got to understand how it's very humbling. You got to understand how merciful God is. How gracious he is towards you. How much he loves you before you can go and tell people. So the greater the revelation of God's love towards you, the greater the ministry of love and reconciliation will be flowing out of you. And I'm not saying you've got to go do sin so that grace may abound. No, God forbid. All right. I'm saying you've got to understand that it is not one person that sins in a bigger way than another person or one guy is more guilty than another person we are all sinners we we all have fallen short of the glory of god without christ but not anymore you're not a sinner anymore you are saved you're a child of god you're a son of the almighty god you are born again you can't say well i'm a sinner you know no, you, but you gotta, you got to understand that what it took. It cost Jesus his life. You were the reason Jesus died. Have you ever thought about that? If you want to know who was the reason that, that Jesus died, it was you 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 the reason <laughs> he died but he's risen and he's the reason why you can live praise the lord praise the lord let's read um, and then we're going to take communion i feel like that that that's what the lord wants to say tonight um verse 16 let's read it again how be it for this cause i obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ must show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them <laughs> which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Whom has been forgiven much, the same loveth much. I mean, Paul knew he was the reason Jesus died. His sin, I'm talking about his sin, man. His sinfulness, your sinfulness, mine. It was the reason why he died. There was no other way. You realize how serious that sin was. It was enough to send you to hell for all eternity. The sinfulness of your soul before Christ or without Christ is enough. If you thought maybe you... You needed Jesus less than somebody else. That was enough to send you to hell for all eternity. That's how wicked it is. That's how far away. That's how serious sin is. And that just the fact that Jesus died such a death and he was, he took your place on the cross uh, must tell you that it wasn't just a small little thing it was a real problem we were all doomed and on our way to eternal separation from God and destruction without hope without any hope in this world strangers from the Commonwealth of Israel but now we reconciled that's the message and it's funny that the more he has forgiven you. And the more you realize how precious He is, and how th the more thankful you become. You, the more thankful you are, the, the, the more you realize how precious it is and how 
the more you appreciate it. You know, the more you worship God, the more your heart is in love with Jesus. People want to know, how do I fall in love with Jesus? One of the ways is to start being appreciative and to know what price he paid to save your soul and how serious it was. And if he was not willing to do that, and if he didn't do it, you would have had something terrible to look forward to. Um, and so many millions, so many, 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 many millions, billions of people tonight. They don't know this. They don't, they don't know about Jesus. May God have mercy. I want to read verse 12 again. I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who hath enabled me for that he counted me faithful putting me into the ministry. I want to say thank you Father that you put me into the ministry. I want to honor this ministry and thank you Lord for that anointing and that calling that you've placed on my life. I ask you Father that you will use me for your glory. Here am I, send me Lord. Lord there's many watching tonight that you have never realized this, but there's a calling of God on your life. And that's the reason why you've been watching and tuning in and why your spirit is leaping inside of you. And you're still trying to get the job. You're still trying to do the work. You're still trying to do things as, as usual, as you used to do them. But I say this by the, and not lightly because I know what it costs to be in ministry. But I say that there are certain people that you're not going back to your work. You're going to be a soul winner. You're going to be a minister of the gospel. You're going to be prof prophesying and healing the sick and casting out devils. God is there. I know it for a fact. God called me for people who's got a calling on their lives. That's what, that's the actual, that he says, entrusted unto faithful men who's able to teach others also. I know that not every, not everyone, but there are some people watching right now. And when I say that, it feels like your heart is being pulled out of your chest and you can feel almost tears welling up because it's a desire. That's it. That's the fire. That's the desire. I'm talking to you. No, the Holy Sp the Word is talking to you. And I pray this, this scripture over every person listening right now. Because everybody's got a calling to win souls. You don't have to be an evangelist. You win souls, you do the work of the ministry. And an evangelist teaches you how to win souls. But first of all, you've got to get saved. You've got to know about the love. And there's got to be a profound appreciation. Listen to what he says in verse 12 in the Amplified. I give thanks to him who has granted me the needed strength and made me able for this, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he has judged and counted me faithful and trustworthy, appointing me to the stewardship of the ministry. So robo shekata. Man, this is heavy. So listen, this is verse 17. Now you've got to see the appreciation and the worship. When Paul talks about these things, the appreciation and the sincerity and the thankfulness, the gratitude that is, that is alive in him because he's thinking of where Jesus saved him from. This is verse 17. Now unto the King eternal. <laughs> Immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Come on, this is, this is Paul, man, he's worshiping Jesus here. It's personal, this is so personal. He's talking from his heart here, man, to Timothy. This charge I commit unto thee, <laughs> Son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, 
that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, having a holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith has made shipwrecked, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, who I have delivered unto Satan, that they may not blaspheme. Those are strong words, brother. Paul, 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 Paul. He, he comes, he delivers people to say, he's serious about the gospel and the ministry. He is not playing uh, or beating around the bush. He, he, he is serious. When people come and oppose and blaspheme, the truth and the sincerity. Paul takes his authority and he's not afraid to say it. He says, I delivered them to Satan. Huh? So that they may learn not to blaspheme. Maybe we should start preaching that in the church. We get some people right. Stop blaspheming. I'll deliver you to Satan. Why would he say that? says, I deliver the flesh unto Satan so that the soul may be saved. Sometimes it's better if, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about it tonight, but, but there are certain times where God would do that. Where for a season, where we yeah, are the flesh, it's just flesh. It's all right. I'll rather lose an arm or lose my eye or lose. If your he says, if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Or if your eye causes you to stump, pluck it out. It's better for you to lose something in the flesh than to lose your eternal salvation. Okay. Now it's not, he's not talking about going around, cutting off people's arms and plucking people's eyes out, but with the same intensity and, and resolve that you would if you would pluck out your eye if it caused you to stumble with that same resolve keep yourself in the presence of the Lord I know Dave Robertson had a vision he said, and, and we hear these stories about people who go diving and the tides come in and their foot gets caught in the rocks in the ocean and the tide comes in and they're going to drown because they can't get free. I know the one guy had a knife and I'm sorry for saying this, but he cut off his own foot to save his life. Otherwise he would have drowned. He, cut, he amputated his own foot and he got his foot out and I think they sewed it back on again. But the point is, man, you've got to have resolve. You, you, you've got to have a desire to live. You know? And people do have that. And with that same resolve that you would cut off your own foot to get away from a burning car that's about to explode or a rock that caught your foot and the tide is coming in you're going to lose your and you understand what what the lord is implying there pluck out your eye cut it off let it go let things go so father tonight in the name of jesus Lord, we, we honor this temple that you have given us. We honor, we honor the body that you have given us. This mortal flesh is precious, Lord. And it's not our own. It be, it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. We do not belong to ourselves. So, Father, tonight we ask you, Holy Spirit. It's not by power. It's not by might. But, Lord, there's an urgent invitation from your heart for people to get into your presence it's not a suggestion it's not just a good idea it's life or death it's life or death lord we're living in a time where we cannot afford father our minds lord sometimes we're so thick-headed we're so stubborn and we kick against the pricks and we're still thinking of the old we can get away, we can get by with the old way of doing things. Everything's changing, Lord. 
Lord, show us how serious it is, how you can't say you must pray because then we lose that willingness and we lose that intimacy and we lose that personal relationship with you. But Father, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you will win people's hearts tonight. That you will win our hearts and awaken love in the name of Jesus for your name's sake. You said for your name's sake, I will lead you in paths of righteousness for my name's sake. So Lord, for your name's sake, lead us into the paths of righteousness. Draw us nearer to your presence, nearer to thee, Lord. Lord, it was my sinfulness, my past, my nature, that, that was the reason that you died on the cross of Calvary. Lord, don't let me just, don't let us just take it flippantly or lightly or what do you call it? haphazardly or what do you call it? Lord, but show us Holy Spirit. Let there be the reverential fear of God. Take out the stony heart and let the consciences that were seared, Lord, let it be healed. Let the broken hearts be bound up. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we couldn't do it if we wanted to. But it is God that works in us both to do and to will according to his good pleasure. The fact that we're listening to this, that you're teaching us and that you're speaking from your word concerning these precious truths. Lord, means that your word will be confirmed with signs, wonders and miracles. And that tonight our lives will never remain the same in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Heal our hearts. Love, love, love. More love, Lord. More love. There's the song, you'll never leave here like you came in Jesus' name. I just feel the Lord singing over you and He's saying He loves you and His love is pouring into you. More love, more grace, more goodness, more presence, more anointing, more of His goodness. And as you experience more and more and more of his love, you're going to start ministering to people in such a love and in such under such a conviction of the Holy Spirit. that when you open your mouth to preach the gospel to someone or witness or testify of the, what the Lord has done for you, that there will be conviction that you will believe what you're saying, that you're not just going to go through the motions and through your Bible school, seminary, Notes, theological, little key point scriptures. No, it must flow from your heart, man. It's got to be like Paul flows. This is serious stuff. This is precious stuff that Paul is talking about. He says, if you don't agree with it and you want to, you want to, then I'll deliver you to Satan so that your soul may be saved. He says, now if I think of these things that how God saved me and he used me so that my life can be a witness of his long suffering and of his faithfulness, of his mercy. Then I want to say, Lord, now unto the King eternal, immortal, the only wise God, be glory and honor forever and ever. <laughs> there is this beauty, this realness, this, this heart to heart talk that Paul is having here because he's a man that lives close to the Lord heart to heart talk with his son Timothy and he's talking his as a father talking his heart out with his son you know this is basically how God speaks to you tonight he's speaking he's pouring his heart out to you and uh, and to me oh wow thank you father let's partake of the body of the Lord and then I want to pray for some people. Some of you are getting set free and delivered. Things are leaving you. Things are falling off of you. You'll never be the same.
Take some bread and some wine. Get yourself some. And let's have communion, common union. Let's let's get together and have some communion tonight. Go and get yourself some. I'll give you one minute. Okay, go and get yourself some. PJ, bless you, Nana. Sebo shodo roboko. For those of you that feel the conviction, I need to give an opportunity to participate in evangelism and in revival and in this ministry. And this is an opportun opportunity for you to give cheerfully and with a thankful heart. And so if you want to sow a financial seed into the ministry, into Loveborn, I'll put the banking details in the comments or go on the loveborn.net uh, website that's on there. I uh, also put my personal banking details in here if you want to give an honorarium or a priestly offering to me personally as the Lord leads you. The PayPal account is paypal.me forward slash loveborn. Paypal.me forward slash loveborn. One word, loveborn. And you are love born. We bless you in Jesus' mighty name. I call in your harvest in Jesus' mighty name. Mariana, receive those open doors in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Let's partake. Whatever your prayer request is, put it on there right now. Put it on there. I'll give you just a moment. As we partake of the communion of the body and the blood of the Lord Jesus tonight, Whatever your prayer request, whatever the situation. Some of you might just need to say, Lord, you know. Some of you, you can't even put it into words. You were destined to listen to this message tonight. Just put it out there and take something. Get a peppermint or some water or something. Get something and take communion with us if you don't have bread. Eloise, peace to you in the name of Jesus. Let's partake. As you put your prayer request out there, and you eat the body and you drink the blood, it was for you and it was for that situation that Jesus died. That situation that you just mentioned, that you just put out there, that prayer request, that petition, that was the reason he gave his life. He paid with his lifeblood for that miracle to take place. You will not be denied in the name of Jesus. No more denying you. You will not be denied because the blood speaks for you tonight. Let's eat. Your glory, man. Shigare besite lende. Leo robo sebarande. What's that? And that's a joyful noise. Ah, base ketiba romundo. Thank you, Lord. Let's partake of the blood. some anointing oil I'm going to anoint this camera lens just as you partake of the communion I am releasing an anointing upon you now in the name of Jesus it's an unstoppable anointing that God will not abandon the work of his hands he will not abandon you thank you Holy Ghost all abandonment go 
You know what the Lord is saying? The Holy Spirit is saying many are struggling with abandonment issues where people have abandoned you in life. The absent father or the absent mother or absent people, even absent pastors, absent friends, they've abandoned you. They walked away. They turned their back on you. People have rejected you and walked away from you and you don't understand why and you don't know what's going on. And now people are sitting and they think God is abandoning them and they've got abandonment issues and you feel so abandoned. You feel as God is saying to you, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. No, never. He's yours and you are with him. He loves you. No one will pluck you from his hand. So, Lord Bosa, he'll not abandon you. He will not abandon you. You are not forsaken. You're not forgotten. You're not hopeless. You're not isolated, desolate. You're not outcast. You're part of the family of God. You're part of the fellowship of the saints. You're part of the household of God. You're part of the body of Christ. The anointing is destroying that yoke off of you in the name of Jesus. You're not abandoned. You will never be abandoned. You will never know what it is like to be forsaken of God. He was forsaken so that you can be accepted. That was the cross. That was the real price of Calvary. That was the real price of Calvary. You're free in Jesus' name. It's off of you in the name of Jesus. It's off of you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Casa Batole Peto. Just, just for a moment. Just be aware of him. Just allow him to minister to you for just one moment. Just. Change lives, Lord Jesus. Finances be released. Saga Galdine Loosen the bonds off of businesses, Lord. Off of people struggling with pain. Ava, be healed in the name of Jesus.
Shreka Shekuto Keseki Tabako Telemi That's a powerful anointing, guys. Bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, guys. Well, enjoy. Go make yourself a second cup. And uh, put some more music on, worship music. And just enjoy that presence. Just go and you're going to have a wonderful evening. And remember next week, it's going to be so blessed. It's already started already started. I'll see you guys tomorrow afternoon, 4 p.m. South African time. I bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Bless you, Kathleen McNett. Shidra Bago Zokote Bakatala Bakote. Sharon, bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you, Ava. I treasure you too. Really, thank you guys for the praise. Thank you. Anita, bless you. Jess, Anita van der Jeffer, bless you. Anita, you bear, bless you. Close you. Tinas, be healed. Your back be healed, Tinas, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Sure. Oh, that's this is the atmosphere of miracles. That, that's, that's how it feels. This is it. This is when it happens. This is it. That's the atmosphere of Jesus, the presence. Guys, thank you. I'll see you tomorrow evening. Um, tomorrow evening, you've got to tune in. Uh, to, uh, afternoon, 4 p.m. Even if you watch the rerun, I'm going to be praying more specifically for prayer requests and prophetic teaching. And we're going to flow in the spirit. And, and maybe we'll go on with Timothy. I don't want to say anymore what we're going to do. Uh, because God changes ev all, everything. He, he just... He, he does what he wants to do. So, But let's show up. How's that? <laughs> Amen. Bless you guys. Bye-bye. See you.